everybody. Welcome back to the show. I have a very anticipated guest here today. Everybody's been so excited about her coming on. You guys have been pestering me forever to have her in the studio. So I'm very, very happy to welcome Jenna Hayes. Hi. Hi, Jenna. This is exciting. I haven't done an interview in years. I know. And I'm so honored that you would come and do one with me. Well, I couldn't say no. Come on. It's you. Well, you could. Uh, but, I, but I wouldn't. No. Oh, <laughs> Should I move this closer to her mouth? Okay. There we go. Yeah. We want to make sure we hear you because otherwise yes. you don't want me to be louder than you. I'm a naturally loud talker. So, so am I. Okay, good. Good. So Jenna, what? it's been like forever since I've seen you. What have you been up to? Oh, so much. Like, where do I start? I know, right? Um, the last we saw each other was probably a photo shoot, right? Actually, no. It was, um, we were hanging out with Jelena for someone's birthday. Was it her oh, birthday? Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the, at the Mexican restaurant. Yes, at the Mexican yes. restaurant. Yeah. Wow, that was a while ago. Yeah, it was. That was at least a few years ago, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to school. That's my main thing right now. Right. You're so, doing psychology, right? Yes. Psychology. I am a junior now. So I have one more year and I'll have my BA in the grad school. Wow. It's a long process. What's it like being back at school? It's crazy because yeah. I hadn't been in a classroom in so long. So going back and being in this atmosphere where not only is everybody much younger than me, but mm-hmm. like I have deadlines. I have specific deadlines and test times that I have to take and stuff where in adult I – I acted as my own boss. So I can kind of pick and choose when I want to work, when I don't want to work. If Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling like shooting that day, I I shot for myself, you know, towards the end. So I could cancel it if I wanted to, you know, it was my money, (laughs) you know, it's my time. But now it's like, I have, I have to, you know, I have a 10 page paper due. There you go. Got to do it. There's no, there's, you know, no procrastinating as much Mm -hmm. or, or putting things off or anything. It's, um, it's a lot different. It's a lot more regulated, a lot stricter schedule. Um, yeah. Being in class with people who are 18, 19 years old is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Weird, right? It hey, is. Does anybody ever recognize you? I have not been recognized once. Oh, that's great. It's really great. So people always ask me, what school do you go to? And I'm like, I'm not telling you. No, of course I'm not. not. I wasn't even going to, like, in my head, I was going to ask you, but then I realized I can't ask you that publicly because you just want to go to, you just want to be a student, you know? You don't want to be like, Jenna Hayes, a porn star. Like, you just want to go to class, do, do your work, and, like, be treated like a normal person. And I like to dress, I make sure I dress down so, you mm-hmm. know, I don't really look like. You're not like- wearing, like, fluorescent Gonzo Jules Jordan mesh outfits. Absolutely. Absolutely not. No, I'm wearing like Converse and skinny jeans and rock t-shirts and my glasses. So it's, it's You've quite different. You've always dressed like classy. I wouldn't say conservative, but I don't remember you ever like walking around in like tiny booty shorts and like, no. you know, shirts that say like slut across the gr- across. For my movies, yeah. Yeah, but I mean like in real life, you know what I mean? For movies, yeah, but in real life, no, no. I've always tried to keep it more classy. Um, I've always, you know, I got told by... I think it was Jill Kelly who told me back in the day, like if you if you carry yourself like a star, you get treated like a star, mm-hmm. you know. And I've I've kind of watched where some girls in the business, some haven't, some have made like Angela White talk about classy. Oh I my know, goodness, right? she's oh, amazing, biggest crush ever on her. Yeah, um, and some girls are still very classy, but I've kind of watched over the years, especially since I've retired at the conventions and the award shows, girls kind of. Mm-hmm. dress more like they do in the movies, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Like, I find the red carpet for uh, the award shows is just a fascinating kind of exploration into people's, like, sense of style because normally the models are being dressed up in whatever the director wants them to wear or whatever. Um, so when girls get to, like, actually choose their own outfits, like, sometimes I'm absolutely horrified and then sometimes I'm like incredibly impressed it's an incredibly diverse yes <laughs> um diverse. wardrobe choice when yes. you go to the awards I went for the last time not this year but the last year mm-hmm. I went and presented again and mm-hmm. um did a little you know my last time on the stage I wanted to go and have a good time and and it was just interesting it was um it was a completely different setup than the last time I went because it was so long you know the we're last- talking about the avian awards yeah right? okay. I just want to differentiate because there's yes. the expiz too and oh sorry people avian. It, it's okay <laughs> It's okay. Expos has just gotten pretty big lately. It so has. When you would say award show, you only meant AVM, but now like Expos is kind of like a, a big contender. So, so sometimes you have to clarify. But right. Okay, but when on. I retired like eight years ago, it wasn't as, right. It no, wasn't right. as big. It was. It was big, right. but it wasn't as big. It wasn't yeah, the way it is now. Correct. Yeah. So, but when I went and everything, it was just interesting to see mm-hmm. how much it's changed and everything. And it was a good time, though. Yeah. It's always a good time. What do you think? 
that you've seen has been like the biggest change in the industry since your time of being there? Oh, wow. Um, I think that things have just, and I've said this before, but I think that things have gotten extreme in one aspect, mm-hmm. like pretty extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at, a, at the same time, though, you also have people like Erica Lust who are making like more romantic, like, yeah. You know? So it's interesting because I feel like since I've retired, it's kind of like, polarized yes yeah it's like either super extreme or it's like not and it's it's interesting i'm glad that the other stuff is being made like by mm-hmm. erica lust and stuff because mm-hmm. i think that there's an incredible need for it in mm-hmm. the industry um but yeah i've just seen like i mean when i first started in in porn there wasn't triple anal yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah when i started in 2001 that wasn't a thing you know mm-hmm. um and now it's like a thing like i'm you know i'm i'm on twitter and i scroll and i see people be like yeah i'm available for you know and it, it was funny um it was somebody put TAP and I actually had a moment where I was like, I don't know what that means. Hold on. TAP. I know all the acronyms. Yeah. Right. And then I was like, oh my God, triple anal. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Cause I didn't know that was like a thing that girls were like really like saying they do, but I guess they don't know. Yeah. It's so it's, in some ways it's a strange competition to like see how like insane and crazy you can be and like push the envelope in that way, which, you know, to each their own, if that's, if that's your thing, good for you. But I'm with you. I'm not into that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and you've talked about this before in other interviews, but I mean, you're really well known for your intense scenes and you've won best new starlet female performer of the year, like among other awards. So if triple anal, isn't like a thing, like a thing that you want to do or a thing that you find sexy, what, like what does constitute a sexy scene for you? I mean, I just think passion and, and chemistry between the two people, because you know, you, like you can notice in my old movies too, like I always tended to work with the same guys over mm-hmm. and over towards the end of my career because those are the guys that I had passion with. Those mm-hmm. are the guys that I connected with, you know, mm-hmm. and I did good scenes with. And I think that um, without that, you can't have a good sex no matter how extreme you are. Right. You, know? you can't have a good scene. Right. Um, so. I want to look up um, because there was somebody who actually specifically asked you a question specific. along those lines. And I just want to make sure that I mention them by name. Um, so it was somebody who was asking you who your favorite male performer was. And that person is not in my emails. <laughs> I can't find it. Um, okay. Anyways, someone did want to know what your, who your favorite male performer was. So did you have a favorite? I did. Um, I really liked, of course, everyone's favorite Manuel Ferrara. Yes. Of course. Yes. Um, and I really liked Scott Nails and Karen Lee. Yes. I think those were like my top three. Yeah. You know, Scott Nails is back. Somebody mentioned that to me the other yeah. day and I was like, what? Scott- I think it was Joanna. I think Joanna mentioned it. To yeah. Me. He gave me, um, he actually gave me my dog. <laughs> Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, my dog Bonnie was originally Scott's and him and Lacey when they were together and he brought her to set one day and I I took her home and she's amazing. Oh, that's great. So Scott, if you're listening for some reason, Bonnie's still alive. Thanks for the dog. Yeah, (laughs) she's she's a fucking awesome dog. That's funny. Um, So, uh, okay. So in terms of like passion and the same guys that you worked with over and over again. So you started off, um, you know, obviously as a female performer and like shooting with ice like did you have a lot of control over who your scene partners were kind of right away or did that not really happen until you started your own company and started directing um well right away you don't get to pick when you first get right. into adult. You don't get to pick. My first scene was with the guy who got me in the business and his best friend. So that was, you know, a little bit more, you know, easy or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I was never, I was never shy or anything on camera. It came naturally to me, but, um, but you definitely didn't get to pick your, your partners at the beginning. You kind of just had to work with whoever the directors wanted you to work with. Right. And then as I built a name, I think after I, I finished, I won Starlet of the Year, which was like 2003. Mm-hmm. I started to get a lot, a little bit more control mm-hmm. over, over calling the shots and everything like yeah. that. And then, um, and then once, uh, and then I switched to doing, from doing guys to doing girls only when I was under contract with Jill Kelly. Right. And then I kind of just had to work with whatever girls that right. they kind of assigned me with. So I lost a little bit of control then. <laughs> and then, um, and then when I came back and I, you know, got out of that contract and started doing guys again, I, um, I, there were some scenes that I got complete control over. And then there were other ones where either it was a feature where they had to have the specific actor in it, or it was like, say like a multiple blowjob scene or something Mm -hmm. like that, where you don't always get get to be that picky when you have that many guys that you have. Yeah. But, um, but for the most part I got to call the shots and I actually, 
wish that I'd known earlier the power that I had Mm -hmm. as far as calling the shots in the business with my own career. You know, I kind of thought a lot of times I would be like, oh, you know, like at the beginning, like I feel like I could have called the shots more. I feel feel like I could have picked the guys at the beginning more than if I really pushed it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think that a lot of girls are like that. You get in this industry and you just go, okay, okay. Like you're eager to work and you're like, okay, it's great money. Like I'll work with whoever. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I think women need to really realize that, you know, you got the power. You have the power. Your pussy is the power. Like you yeah. call the shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you make the rules. You know, it's your body. Yeah. Have you noticed a difference in the industry? Like, because you know, things have shifted from when you left. There's a lot of girls that are producing their own content now mm-hmm. and selling their own content, and also too, social media has become a platform for girls to be able to voice their concerns, their issues, call out people that they think they're are treating them badly. It's become kind of like a weapon. So do you feel that girls these days, does it look, seem to you like girls these days have more power, more agency over their own career than they did before? I think they're definitely getting more vocal about it. Okay. And I, and I, I think that, um, I think that that's good because I think that it goes in the direction of where, you know, we want them to go. We mm-hmm. want them to have the more power and, and bodily autonomy and everything like that. Right. But, um, but I don't know. I haven't seen as much of a difference, I guess. I don't know because I'm not in it though. Yeah. You know, because I'm, I'm kind of outside of the industry now. I don't get to know all the workings and I'm, I, I peek my head in every once in a while. I'm like, mm-hmm. what's going on? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, cause I still love the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I see them making the push though. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's important. Right. You know? Right. Okay. I want to actually go backwards and backwards. talk about your very first scene, which okay. was with Craven Moorhead, who's a, like a director now. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually never knew he was a performer, but I, I don't know anybody. I don't know anyone who, anybody except for like performers. You Holly, know? you interview everyone. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm working on it. <laughs> and then uh, Slim Shady. Nice name. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Did I just make you spit out your tea? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was 2001, That's people. True. This is true. This is true. Eminem was huge. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So your first scene was with them, and it was supposed to be only an oral scene. It was. But in the heat of the moment, you got so into it that you ended up fucking both of them? Is that... I did. Yeah. It happened like that. <laughs> wow. And was that... So- it was a thing. I don't know. I was... So most girls... It's interesting because most girls, like when they say, you know, their first scene, they were terrified, deer in the headlights. They didn't know what they I were doing. I was never terrified. And it sounds to me like you were like rearing from the start. Like your first scene, you were like, okay, this is for me. Is that is that how you felt? Yeah. It felt pretty natural and normal to me. Wow. It didn't feel awkward to be on state or on camera having having sex or mm-hmm. anything like that. Mm-hmm. It just felt normal and I loved it. Yeah. And so, yeah, the first scene was supposed to be like that. And I was just like, I want to do more. Wow. <laughs> and so, of course, I didn't get paid for more. I was just <laughs> <laughs> if you did, they're like, no, girl, this is an oral scene. That's your right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was it was good. And I think it also um, because it, it gave the industry an idea of my attitude, mm-hmm. you know, from the get go. I mm-hmm. think that, you know, word spread pretty quickly and, mm-hmm. and that helped me to mm-hmm. uh, project myself into my like my career you know yeah i've done interviewing so long i'm so nervous <laughs> you're doing great it's so funny you're doing great i just i'm not used to talking so much anymore <laughs> it's okay it's okay it's good it's you like should. about myself like i'm used to talking about like topics right, right. well <laughs> today cool. the topic is you um so okay so you obviously like and i think honestly that that was a big reason why you were so successful i feel like the audience can really tell if a girl's into her scene or if she's there for a paycheck like i I feel like the fans can really see it because you don't fit like the mold of what one what one thinks a porn star looks like you know blonde hair big fake tits like all that kind of stuff you're like petite brunette like you know kind of some people have called you like girl next door um, but you're massively famous. So what do you think was maybe, do you think that that's the reason why you were so successful or do you think there are other key components as to what made you, you know, who you are? I think definitely the fact that I loved sex and mm-hmm. I like to be on camera. I think that you're right that that shows and the, and the viewer can connect to that a little yeah. more and they can see that whether they're aware of it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think also I had a good work ethic. Mm-hmm. You know, I always showed up. I always, you know, did my job. I handled my own career. Mm-hmm. I was my own manager and agent and everything. 
So I think that all of those things, um, like me being in charge of it and ca- made me care about it so much more. Mm-hmm. So I think that that shows. Yeah. And I think that when you, when people see someone who's really into their job and they really are enjoying it and they take it seriously too, it's not just like, you know, me doing porn to go get drug money and party right. and, you know, blow it all or buy right. Louis Vuitton bags or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. When they see that you take it seriously and that this is like your career, I think that, yeah, they, they like that. Yeah. A little bit more. They can see the professionalism rather than you're just some, you know, party girl. Yeah. You know? I feel like you were kind of one of the first girls in this new era where, you know, technology and the internet was allowing you to cut out the middleman and have more agency over your career that really took that and ran with it. Because then you you shifted from becoming a performer to starting your own production company and um, becoming a director. So what was the, what did you, what do you feel that you brought to the table as a director that you learned from being behind the, in front of the camera? Well, I think that I mixed like the feminine gaze with the male gaze Mm -hmm. pretty well. You know, I think that the movies that I produced for Generation X were naughty, but really pretty. Yeah. (laughs) They were, they were pretty dirty, but they weren't, um, they were still so beautiful and artistic, you know, Mm -hmm. where I think that a lot of a lot of adult either gets on one side or the other. But I think because I had been in the industry so long shooting for people like Jules Jordan Mm -hmm. and everything, I had a really good eye for and a knack for Gonzo Mm -hmm. and that kind of um, feel. But I also have the female, you know, I want things to be pretty and Mm -hmm. beautiful and I love expensive lingerie and all of these things. Do you still have all that agent provocateur stuff? (laughs) I remember when we shot, you brought like this huge suitcase full of like $18,000 worth of like AP lingerie and outfits. And I was like, holy fucking shit. This is so much agent provocateur. I still have stuff I haven't worn. I still have stuff I haven't worn. Really? And I, I'm reluctant to get rid of any of it because yeah. I've been selling stuff from my wardrobe and my store right. online store on shopdenahays.com mm-hmm. and so people like my fans can buy like their my outfit that I wore in like um Dark, Jenna Hayes dark side or something like that right. they can buy the outfit now right. I'm trying to you know give them to fans to collect and uh and <laughs> I can't part I've had some fans be like can we get some of the agent provocateur and I'm like no <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready to part with that yet some of it doesn't even fit me anymore and I'm still like I don't want to let you go. Yeah, I hear you. It's like, you know, it's got sentimental value. Well, I think it's more of how much money it costs. I was going to say, like, they would have to pay it because the idea is that if you sell your outfits from shoots, you should make a profit, right? So you they sh- you should sell it for more than Absolutely. what you bought it for. But the problem is, is that AP is laundry so is expensive. so expensive that, like, to price it even higher than what you originally mm-hmm. bought it for, like, people are going to be spending a fortune. Yep. I mean, they have some bras that are like a thousand dollars. I know. I have ones that are six, seven hundred dollar bras. And... Just the bra. Uh-huh. Not the bra and the panty. I know. It's fucking nuts. I know. I can't shop there anymore. Yeah. I'm a student. I have to pay for my tuition. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, <laughs> Jenna. Be, be professional. I'm trying to be frugal. My <laughs> days of, of $18,000 agent provocateur shopping trips are gone. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what, 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 what about directing? Was there anything that you, that you encountered while directing that kind of surprised you that you weren't expecting? I didn't expect to like it so much. Okay. I thought that it, I was just, you know, I wanted to be more in charge of my product and, and own my own product and everything. Mm-hmm. So that's why I started the company mm-hmm. and I wanted to start directing, but I had only done it once for a JKP movie like years before. Mm-hmm. So being in charge of my own product and being able to pick the wardrobe and pick the people and pick the location, pick everything and go over the editing with my editor and all of these things and, and pick the, what's on the box cover and everything. It's so much fun to, to have start with nothing. You have nothing mm-hmm. that you start with. And then you put together over time, you put together this, th- this project and all of a sudden you have this tangible thing that's art and it's amazing. And like putting that together was just so much fun for me. Yeah. It was so exciting. And I, I honestly, I miss it. People ask me, oh, what do you miss about the business being retired? And I'm like, I miss directing. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't miss the performing at all, but I miss the directing every day. Do you think that you would ever come back and direct? Oh, I'd love to direct, but I can't afford to produce because it's too expensive. Right. The only reason I was able to produce before is because I was dancing and performing as well. So like Would you ever consider it. directing for another production Absolutely. company? Absolutely. I've actually said that to a couple of people in the business. I'm like, if anyone wants me to direct, I would love to direct for them. And nothing's happened. Interesting. <laughs> well, we're putting it out there we're into the universe. There. There's a lot of people from the industry who listen to this podcast. So if anybody's interested in hiring Hiring Jenna Hayes as your director. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Here she is. I miss it. She misses it. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so 
Another thing that you did that was um, you were kind of the beginning of the forefront of the Fleshlight Girls. You were like, what, the third Fleshlight Girl? Mm -hmm. And this was, I feel like, kind of a a revolutionary way to sell a product. I don't recall before there ever being like a sex product, you know, created after a girl where they gave the girl a percentage and therefore like gave you incentive to push it. And it was wildly successful. And I know that a lot of girls were like living off of their fleshlight checks yeah, um, for a while. So how was that for you? Were you surprised by, <clears throat> excuse me, the success of it? Absolutely. They, um, they were after me for a while to, to sign with them. And Mm -hmm. I had had um, a previous toy deal that fell apart kind of through JKP. Right. And so I was like really reluctant, like really, really reluctant. Because you've been burned already. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. And they were after me, after me. Finally, they offered me such a huge amount as an advance that I was just like, okay, let's just try it. And it's been the best deal I did of my entire career. Yeah. Absolutely. Are you still making money from it? I'm still making money from it. In fact, yes, you guys can still go buy my amazing flashlights. Yes. Lust and obsession. <laughs> um, I still promote them all the time. And in conjunction with my OnlyFans, it's pretty good. You know, that OnlyFans and Genic Studios and you got the still a lot of Jenna Hayes to love. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was the best deal I ever did. And I think that it was an amazing thing for a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, them giving us a percentage. Yeah. It was, um, unprecedented in the industry. Absolutely. And a significant one too. Yeah. And at least I think for you, I think that the, I don't know, I don't know what's going on at flashlight, but I've heard that you guys got a better deal than people later on down the road. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't know, but I think you did. I have a pretty high percentage. So I'm not going to complain. I think they changed it. (laughs) Like, I'm not going to (laughs) complain. It's great. I love flashlight. They've always been a great company to work for. So, Mm -hmm. so, um, another question that, uh, somebody had actually, I think it was a, um, a voicemail Mm -hmm. question. Can we plug in and, and play a voicemail? I didn't set you up for it. Uh oh. We can a little, a little later. Okay, yeah. after the break. Yeah. We'll do it after the break. Okay, okay, guys, we'll do it after the break. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save that question because I think somebody asked it um, in the actual. Uh, someone left me us a, a voicemail. Um, <clears throat> so it's a requested question. Yes, it is. Um, okay, so you've retired. Oh yeah, almost exactly eight years ago. Actually, my last scene was end of April. In 2011. So why, why did you retire? That's the question that everybody wants to know. And my usual answer is you have to read my book that's going to come out to find out. Um, but there was, there's a myriad of reasons. There's like a zillion reasons. Um, piracy is one of them. Mm. Because of tube sites, it wasn't financially doable for me to keep producing. I right. and, and seeing my hard work like out there for free was heartbreaking, just yeah. awful. So um, the piracy had a lot to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um I also felt that a lot of the industry was going in a direction that I wasn't uh, quite into. I saw a lot of girls doing a lot of things on the side, escorting privates, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, agencies possibly being involved with that stuff. And and I was just like, I don't want to be a part of this. This isn't what I signed up for. Granted, I don't think there's anything wrong with any kind of sex work. I think Mm -hmm. to each your own. Um, But I, I do remember, I believe it was like bringing in STDs possibly, like that kind of stuff. It just made me feel a little unsafe, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And I also, the industry started to get really huge. Yeah. Like really huge. When I was, you know, when I started, we used to go to a place called AIM to get tested back in 2001. Good old AIM. And there was like, I think they said that there was like, you know, I don't know, like a few hundred people or something that got tested at that time, Mm -hmm. you know, there for the industry. And now there's like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. You know, Mm -hmm. there wasn't even like adult made uh, movies really made in other areas. It was predominantly just here. But now it's like you have Vegas and you have Miami and you have so much more in Europe. And, you know, I feel like there's just so much more going on. The industry stopped being as close knit as I liked it to be because it felt more like a family where you knew everybody. And Mm -hmm. it just started to get so much bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was just like, I don't know any of these people anymore. (laughs) So it started to make me feel a little unsafe. And. I don't know. Other reasons too. <laughs> a lot of other reasons. Um, when people will have to read your book to find out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea when your book is coming out? Or are you still working on it? Oh, I'm still, the problem is that other projects keep coming up. I hear you. And it's really hard to write about yourself in your own life. Yeah. Like real, like harder than I expected it to be. Yeah. 
So I've been working on two different books, a creative writing project and my memoir. Mm -hmm. And the memoir just keeps getting pushed back further and further because I'm having the hardest time talking about myself. Do you feel like, do you almost feel like it's kind of narcissistic to be writing a book It's incredibly narcissistic. Yeah, I hear hear you. And because I'm studying psychology, I'm like, why, what, you know, why am I doing this? What's the motivation behind me doing this? (laughs) And mostly it's because fans want to know, you know, they're they're interested. And of course it'll hopefully make me some money, but, um, it's, it's, you know, getting my story out there is the purpose in it. But at the same time, it kind of makes me feel like, I'm just talking about myself over and over. And that's why I don't really like interviews either. <laughs> I just keep talking about myself. That's funny because that is so unlike, you know, so many people that are generally in front of the camera. Usually, like, they love talking about Well, I think it's themselves. the way I used to be, too. I used to be yeah. more like that, too. But yeah. I think now that I'm... You think now that you have, like, some some distance from the industry, you're kind of like... Well, I'm not inside the porn bubble anymore. Right. Because it right. really is a bubble. Yeah. And once you step outside, you realize, oh, my God, like... The world, there's a whole huge world out there. That doesn't revolve around you. <laughs> that also just doesn't revolve around porn. Yeah. You know, and, and who's doing what in porn and everything mm-hmm. like that. So it's, uh, yeah. It's definitely very insular. <laughs> um, did you encounter any stigma at all, like when you left the industry? Um, I mean, there's always going to be stigma, I think. And mm-hmm. I think that's one of the problems. Oh, I can't wait for you to hear my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're gonna so get to excited. that. Sorry. I know you keep asking me things that I kind of touch upon in it, right, so I'm right, like, right. Uh, uh. Um, but I'm sorry. Go back. What was uh, if you've ever encountered like any stigma, stigma after you left the industry? Like, was there anything that you tried to achieve or tried to do that you got roadblocks because of what you used to do? I mean, I just had one recently. Actually, I just released a um, a book, a 84 page photography book all shot on film commemorating my final dance tour Mm -hmm. and when we had the event we actually had a a problem where we could not get a liquor sponsor because it was adult related the people pulled out at the very last minute interesting because they found out it was adult related and i was like are you kidding me (laughs) like you're an alcohol company (laughs) i know seriously (laughs) like like i would get if it was like a church (laughs) I mean, I, I think we can safely say that liquor has caused more damage and deaths than um, porn has. Absolutely. And as a, you know, as an ex-alcoholic. I keep forgetting I'm on camera, so. As an ex-alcoholic, I can, I can absolutely say that. Yes. Um, alcohol is terrible. Why do you think I smoke so much weight? <laughs> <laughs> alcohol is terrible. I mean, if you can, you know, manage it. I mean, look. Anything that you can do responsibly is fine. I don't have anything personal against alcohol. I just can't consume it. But I don't think like it should – people I mean, should I, drink it. But. No, I enjoy my champagne and my wine here yeah. and there. Totally. Yeah. I wish I could do I just same. prefer herbal just can't. stuff. <laughs> I can't do that either. Um, I'm so, so sorry. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. I just eat pies in the bath. Oh, that's see, what... I'm with you on that. We can do that together. You can just get a huge tub of ice cream and just. That sounds really. Um, that sounds like a porn scene. We can just <laughs> eat. Does. Just eat. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's great. I like eating pie in the bath. We can do that together. We can eat pie in the bath together. See, Jenna, are you sure still... you don't want to come back? <laughs> there is a little porn still left in me. Damn it. No, but that's the thing, and I think that's a big thing coming out of it. People have given me crap because I keep posting sexy pictures or I mm-hmm. keep doing nude photography shoots, and people are like, why? If you're out of porn, why? are you still promoting your fleshlight? Why are you still doing this? And I'm like, because I'm still a sexy woman. Yeah. And I still love my sexuality. I don't regret anything that I did. So why should I, just because I retired, why should I shun it? Yeah. It seems like it's got to be like so black and white. It's either got to be you're, you're in the porn industry and you're performing and you're all for it. Or if you've left the porn industry, you left because like you hate it and you regret everything that you did and you have all this trauma and, and you don't want anything to do with it anymore. Like and I think it's not people, like that. Right. And for I me think, at least. No, it, it, it's, I mean, you know, that's been the case with some people, obviously, but it's not the case for everybody. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, I mean, here, here's a perfect example. Um, look at Sonny Leone, right? Uh-huh. Like she's a huge Bollywood star now. Massive. Like, fucking massive. She's probably the most famous person I've ever had sex with. Yeah. I mean, she's huge. <laughs> so, um, but she doesn't. Like, she doesn't do porn anymore, obviously. Mm -hmm. She's got, like, a mainstream acting career. She's got a very successful career in India. But she doesn't, like, regret having done porn. She doesn't turn around and say, like, that's all worth it. I wish I'd never done it. You know? Like, she just found something else that worked for her, and she moved on. And Totally. It's not easy, especially being in front of the camera. It's not easy to be in porn your whole fucking life. Now, some people can do it. Like, some people can have serious longevity in it. But I don't know anyone that, like... 
you know, has been in the industry for a long time who hasn't at least like taken a break for a while. Right. Right. You know, cause it's, it's a lot on your body. It is. And I, I don't, you know, I don't regret anything that I did <laughs> really. Yeah. I really, I enjoyed my career and everything. And I think that you're right. Like people think it has to be black or white mm-hmm. and it's not like life is gray. Mm-hmm. Most of life is gray. It's not yes. black or white. Yes. And I, you know, I, I like being naked on camera still in photo shoots and I still like to portray my sexuality, you know, someday I'm going to be old and wrinkled and I'm not going to be able to do these kinds of things. Right. So right now, yeah, I'm still going to be showing my body off if I want to. It's my prerogative. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, I like it. I like being sexy. I've, no, I've always been a sexual person even mm-hmm. before I got into adults. So why should I have to just flip a switch and turn that off just because I'm now a, a student and I'm going to be a psychologist? Like, Yeah, I think people really like, especially when it comes to sexuality, people really want to pigeonhole you. And they really want to characterize you as being one thing or the other. You know, like yeah. people aren't comfortable. It's like people aren't comfortable with a woman being sexual and a woman being intelligent and a woman like working in a professional um, environment, like what you're working towards. It's like you have to be like one or the other. You know, if you're sexy and you're naked, you can't be intelligent and you can't right. be educated. You know, it's like it's like people's brains just explode with the idea that a woman could be Before. more than one thing. I know. And I feel like I got that a lot of people when I was in the industry, a lot of people think that I'm, I'm not very intelligent because I smoke pot and I'm in porn and I mm-hmm. have this like bubbly, you know, kind of goofy laugh and everything mm-hmm. like that. And I remember reading some comments people would write being like, oh, I bet she's so stupid. I bet she's so stupid, you know. And so like that was actually one of the things like when I went back to school, I was like, oh, I kind of get to prove it to people now yeah. <laughs> that I've got more going on, you know, behind this body and this face than just, you know, sexuality. Yes. This is true. Okay, we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to hear about your TED Talks. Oh, how exciting. I know. (laughs) Are you a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered? Of course you are. Well, I need your help to keep this show going. This is why I've set up a Patreon account where you can donate to support my show, and in exchange, you can be eligible for all kinds of cool, fun perks and prizes, which include autographed DVDs and books. See, guys, she's actually signing shit. Free membership passwords to my website, hollyrandall.com, free mugs, pens, shirts, bags, all kinds of really cool stuff. So take care of me and I will take care of you. I will not only be able to continue to produce this podcast with really awesome, inspiring content about your favorite adult stars, but I will also give back to you in terms of all the cool, fun perks and prizes that we offer. So please, please support me at patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. And thank you guys so much for your support. I could not do this without you. Okay, we are back. So Jenna did a TEDx talk, which is I did. so fucking impressive. I'm, I actually didn't know that coming into this. Uh, so tell me, how did that come about and how did it go? Well, it was one of those things that I watch TED Talks all the time. Mm-hmm. I watch, I try, for a while there, I was trying to watch one a day. Now I'm so busy with school and everything, I can't. But um, I love them. Like, I'm obsessed with them. It's been on my bucket list of, like, things that I want to accomplish in my life. You mm-hmm. know, I keep, a, I keep a list next to my computer with everything that I want to accomplish. Really? And as I, yeah, as I, you know, cross them off, I did my final dance tour, cross that off, did my final dance tour book, cross that off. Yeah. TED Talk, now I get to cross that That's off. That's amazing. <laughs> but they, um, they, I got the email in January. Um, from a university in Belgium and they said, you know, do you want to come and do a TEDx talk? And so I was how did like, they, can, just real quick, how did they find you? Did they tell you, they, they just, they emailed me at my, at my hello at jennahays.com. So either Instagram or my website, I would think. Um, but they contacted me and said that they had researched me and that they wanted me to come and, and give a talk at their, um, their next event, which, um, <laughs> I know trying to pick that off. <laughs> I'm just trying to like clean stuff. Can you tell that? that like, <laughs> oh my God. I had, who, I had Julia Ann on last week and she did the same thing. We both of us kept adjusting the tablecloth and then like she'd pull it and then I pull it to me and it was like this battle over the tablecloth all the like, time. It was, it was pretty funny. The older we, we get, the more Ernie clean we get. Watch this tablecloth because people are just fucking with it too much. It's making them crazy. Okay. So, um, yeah, so they emailed me and, um, they asked me to do uh, – their their event was called – it's called Bright Ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they asked me to do it and they said that they wanted someone to come in and talk about adult and porn mm-hmm. and 
Give, so that was like a, a category that they already had decided on, and yes. they're like, "You're going to be the perfect yes. person for that." Yes. Okay, gotcha. So, and I actually at first thought that it was fake, and I was like, "This is just because I've gotten, I've gotten scam emails from people being like, I'm from L Magazine, and I want you to shoot.'" Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't believe you." <laughs> yeah. Um. So I've I've gotten those, and you have to weed out when you're your own agent, your own manager for everything. You have to weed out, you mm-hmm. know, and it's hard sometimes to be able to discern which are real and which aren't and mm-hmm. so because this is something i wanted so bad i was like oh my god like is this real is this not real yeah and um i kept i was like sure i agreed to do it and then like i was like this isn't real this isn't like you know mm-hmm. i started writing my my speech and everything thinking and then as we got closer and everything and then they set me up with toastmasters to do some like help me with the writing of the speech and the coaching and stuff oh so they, they give you someone to help you with it they did i didn't use it as much as i wanted to though because i was so busy with school right so i wasn't able to have as many like coaching sessions as i wanted to that's great that would be because I, I look at those TED Talks and like I watched Erica Lust's TED Talk uh-huh. and I just – it just seems like such – I mean it seems so exciting. Like I would it's love terrifying. to do one but it looks absolutely terrifying and it's not like it's in this dark room and I've, it's just like well, – And I've never given a speech before. I've only done acting roles and hosted the Avian Awards. And mm-hmm. at the Avian Awards, you know, I had a couple lines here and there go backstage and it was really easy to memorize. Mm-hmm. This was really different. You know, and they want you to memorize the whole thing. And I was like, I was going to ask you, do you get a teleprompter or anything like that? No, I actually, I, I broke the rules a little bit and I did it Monica Lewinsky style, the way that she did it when she did hers. And I had a little music stand with my notes in case I lost my train of thought because I was so, I had such stage fright. Of course. I had like such stage fright that I was like, I'm going to go blank. And if I go blank, I'm going to panic and then I'm going to cry and then I'm going to run off stage. <laughs> Uh, and, th- and that was my worst fear. So I just, I, I told them, I was like, can I just have a music stand with my notes right there just to help me in case I lose my, and I did at one point my, I looked out in the crowd and my mind went blank Oh, I could see and I just went, happening. Oh my God. Because it was, it was also hard to like write it because I'm, I'm giving the speech to a foreign, to people in a foreign country. English is not their predominant language. So I feel like in some ways I kind of had to simplify or like dumb down a little bit my speech more you than I wanted to You didn't want to use like – you don't want it to be too b- verbose. No, and they and I, they wanted me to deliver it in very simple things. So I feel like it's not as intellectual as I wanted it to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get to use all my psychology and like, you know, yeah. newfound uh, skills from my academia mm-hmm. career. But – um, but it still was such an experience, such amazing experience, and I did get to put out some messages that I think are really, really important. Okay. So I'm, I'm really excited. When is it? <laughs> also really nervous. Is it on? It's not out yet, right? It's not out yet. No. Okay. Um, it'll be out. Um, they said that it's almost done. Oh, I'm like shaking right now because I'm so nervous because I know that some people are going to rip me apart for what I said. I know that some people are going to love what I said. Mm-hmm. So I'm like preparing myself for the. Yeah. I think it's the first thing I'm not going to read the comments on. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Do but, you – um? can you talk at all about like any of the subjects that you touched on or is – Well, I basically t- – I talk about um, piracy mm-hmm. and I talk about societal perceptions of pornography. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the basic – overview of what it is but you know they only give you a certain amount of time Mm -hmm. and I have so much that I want to say that instead of like touching on one thing and going super deeply I kind of brought up like a bunch of different little topics Mm -hmm. and my hope in that is that once the TED talk comes out it can open the conversation for those things that I want to talk about even Mm -hmm. more Mm -hmm. you know It'll, it'll open up the floor to, for people to be like, okay, that's a good point. Let's talk about this more in depth, right. you know, which is what I wanted to do with it because there's so much that I wanted to say. Yeah. How long was it? It's like 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Easily the most terrifying thing I've ever done. Yeah. 15 minutes is not that long. It's not, but when you're up there, it seems, it yeah. seems really long and really short at the same time. Right. And now that it's over, I can't remember doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I've totally done that. It's the weirdest I've 100% thing. hundred percent blacked out when I've done like um, public speaking. Yeah, and I'll come off of the stage and I'll be like, I don't know what I said. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. And so now I'm like, it's coming out soon, and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I hope I said everything right, and I hope I didn't mix up words or you know. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited about it. I think I'm one of the first, if not the first, adult star to do one. Yeah, I so, can't think of anybody else that I've seen that has done it. Like I said, I know Erica Lust did one, but she's a director. So well, and hopefully it'll open you know the floor for me to be able to do other ones too. Because yeah. this is something that now that, that's the thing. Now that I did the one, I'm like I want to do it again. Yeah, I'm like I did it once. I liked it. I like the adrenaline of it, but I'm not as scared now. Yeah, because I've done it once. So now I'm like, right. I wish I'd had like a prep one that I yeah. could have done before that. Yeah. <laughs> to get the jitters out. 
But everyone said I did a really good job and they really liked it. The response after when I got off stage was really, really great. So many people came up to me and they were like, you changed my perception about it. I didn't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, you know, that's the point. What is the one like main perception about adult that you would like to change people's minds about? Oh man, you're you're (laughs) going to take away from my Ted talk here. Um, Oh, um, <laughs> word, let's, can I say something that I didn't say in my TED talk? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Girl, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> I, I think that the, uh, the one, one of the points that I didn't get to say in my TED talk mm-hmm. that I really wanted to make was that people think that we're all dumb mm. or that we're all druggies or that we're mm-hmm. all, you know, just in it for the money mm-hmm. or whatever. But there's an astounding amount of people in the industry who love their job and who are professional and who, you know, aren't doing this to support their coke habit or because they got abused as a child or Mm -hmm. anything like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things is that people think that we're all like, we've all been sexually abused as children and we've all, you know, we all have nothing else going on and we have to do this Mm -hmm. and we don't have to do it. We want to do it. Right. (laughs) Why do you feel, why did you get into the industry? What do you think that was your, what were you thinking when you first like did your first scene or you first came in? Were you dancing first and then I danced segued? for one day and it was <laughs> horrible. <laughs> so bad. I was like 18 years old and I danced one day at this little strip club in Orange County and it was so bad. I was covered with bruises the next day. I made like $20. I'm not kidding because the club took a fee mm-hmm. and because it was a day shift. I did like two lap dances and went on stage like 10 times. Oh. And I walked out of there with, I think I had like $80 and then the club took a $60 fee. And so I walked out with $20 for an eight hour shift. And I was like, oh my God, no. Yeah. Like, oh my God, no. That's why house dancers have my utmost respect forever because they hustle. Yeah. They, and it's not an easy job. Yeah. You know, they have to talk, they have to be therapists. Yeah. <laughs> they, have to, they have to do all of this stuff at once. But, and so I, I didn't come back. I was like done. And yeah. It was funny because my name for that day was Sasha. That was my stage. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny. And then, um, yeah, and then I went back to like working normal jobs and I happened to meet a guy, Craven Moorhead and his mm-hmm. friend Slim Shady, who's named Des. Mm-hmm. I happened to meet them and they got me in the industry. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to do it. Like mm-hmm. I had watched porn with my boyfriends, you know, who were older, who were able to go rent it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I liked it. I was always intrigued by it. Mm-hmm. And my ex-boyfriend from high school and I had talked about doing it together you know, when I like got old enough and everything and, um, and then he chickened out. <laughs> and so then when it came to me, I was like, sure, let's do it. Like, why not? You know? Yeah. And I'm, you feel like it was a good decision. I mean, yeah, I feel like it was the best decision. <laughs> yeah. One of the best decisions I could have made. I mean, I could have, you know, I could have tried to get into mainstream and I could have tried to be that mm-hmm. kind of actress and everything like that. But who knows if that would have worked out, you know? And I don't think you would have ever ended up having the control over your career that you have now. Right. And like, I get to, I was able to set myself up for a better future and now I have the money to pay for school, Mm -hmm. you know, where I don't have to take student loans and everything and I get to do my other dream, which is psychology. And it's pretty cool to be able to do two completely like Mm -hmm. opposite, like I'm such a strange dichotomy of a person. So going from this to this, what's happening? Oh, like one hair that's sticking up. Okay, got it. Thanks. Got it. Sorry, sorry. It's a photographer me. I love it. So, uh, what? So, what specifically? Do you have a certain like? Um, what's, what's the word concentration in psychology that you're going to do? What's the word? There's a different word for it. It's not concentration. It's like a specialty. Yeah. Uh, But I feel like there's another, I think there is too. And my brain's not working. I can't think what it is. Okay. But yeah. So in psychology, do you have a specific specialty that you're looking to get into? Um, well, I want to have my own private practice Mm -hmm. is my goal. And Mm -hmm. I'd also like to write books about psychology eventually, but I, I want to work with women primarily, mm-hmm. um, women who have been in the sex industry, obviously, mm-hmm. women who are former sex workers, former adult industry workers, um, women who have been abused, women who have eating disorders. All these things are really close to me because I have family members and stuff that mm-hmm. have experienced them all. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I want, yeah, I just want to work primarily with women and maybe some couples too. I, I, I kind of want to get my sex therapist license as well. Mm-hmm. So I can do that as well. Might as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, every therapist that I've spoken to, um, you know, there's a big, I think, lack of understanding when it comes to sex in like the therapy world. Mm-hmm. And apparently you only need like 
one day of like sex training to do therapy, I believe. Really? Like just as a general practicing therapist. And I know that there's been a lot of girls who've talked about, you know, difficulty in finding a therapist that they can work with because a lot of times they say, I work in porn, and then the therapist is going to associate all of your disorders and your problems to that to that issue to be like oh well you work in porn that's why you have this 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 and this problem like there's a real absolutely lack of understanding around um sexuality and and sex work and so i think there's like a real need for that so it seems to me like that's kind of like the hole that you want to fill no absolutely pun intended. no no absolutely <laughs> and 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 it's a really good way for me to you know enmesh my previous work with my, right yeah, right because then work. i mean you really are like speaking as a sex expert i mean not only do you yeah. will you have you know training and therapy therapy and psychology, but also you worked in that industry. So like you really have, I think you, it kind of, it gives you this more powerful position because you, you have that experience. And it's a different perspective. You yes. know, it's a completely different perspective that I will bring to the table when I do that. Ah, it's so scary and so exciting. <laughs> yeah. It's very exciting. I think it's great. It's so much school. <laughs> <laughs> How many more years do you have? Oh my gosh. Okay. I have, I'm a junior. You're a junior. So you have one more year. I have, yeah. Next year I'll be graduating with my BA and then I'll be starting, uh, not this fall, but next fall in grad school to do my master's. And that's what, another four years? Master's is two years. Okay. And then PsyD, which I, I think I'm going to do a PsyD instead of a PhD because I don't want to do research um, as much. What is a PsyD? A PsyD is, it's it's a psychology doctorate. Okay, gotcha. So it's, it's, it's made more for people who want to do therapy mm-hmm. than people who want to work in like a lab and do research all gotcha. day and experiments. Right, okay. And I don't want to, I want to work with people one-on-one. I want to help people directly. Right. Rather than designing what next, you know, antidepressant is going to work, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that bores me. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, I want to work with people directly and help them. So yeah, the PsyD is for that. It's more for people who want to have their own private practice and it's a year less than a PhD too, mm-hmm. which is nice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so but it's a um, long time. It's a long, a lot of school, but I just keep telling myself like, you know, in three years I'll actually be able to do therapy. I'll be, cause once you have your master's or MFT, you can do therapy mm-hmm. once you get a license. So mm-hmm. I'll be able to do that Yeah, in three years. Yes. Do you kind yes. of feel like though, I mean, I don't know. It's funny because I hear you talk about being back in school and I loved school when I was in school and I loved college and you know, there's a part of me that kind of, that misses it. And the idea of having a ton of homework to do is not exciting to me. But I mean, let's be fair. I do work all the time anyways. So like I work as much as like I would be studying. And I just, I miss like existing in this kind of intellectually stimulating environment. Not that people in porn are dumb, but people, some people in porn are dumb. And, but you know what I mean? I mean, I'm just, I'm not challenging myself on, on an intellectual level at work most of the time. Like we're producing a fantasy sex product. You I know what I mean? I totally get it. Like we really are. And so I just feel like I've gotten fucking dumb. No, I get it. And, and people ask me, that's another, when people say, why have you retired? And it's like, because I accomplished everything I could accomplish in porn. Right. I won pretty much all of the awards. Right. I did almost everything I can do. And now I need to stimulate my brain in a different way. Mm-hmm. So I totally get what you're saying because you know, that's one of the, I got bored. Yeah. I got bored. It's the same thing all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I wanted to expand my brain in a different way, you know, so I totally get it. It is, it's, it's different. You should take some classes. I know. Well, I do, I do try to sprinkle in some, you know, interesting books. Like right now I actually just started reading a book called behave, Mm. um, which is written and I forgot the guy's name. I literally just started yesterday. Um, it's written by a neurobiologist and it's, basically about like what drives human behavior, you know, okay. and, and actually there's, there's a conversation about whether or not free will actually exists. Oh, I love this. And it, it's, um, which is pretty intense. And like I said, I just started reading it, but I think that people aren't really aware of how much dry, what drives our decisions. It's so much in, you know, we think that like we can freely choose the decisions that we have, but so much of why we make the decisions that we do is based around, um, our genetics, the functioning of our prefrontal cortex and our, and our ability to, to, um, our impulse control. Yeah. Which has all (laughs) been created by, you know, genetics, um, the environment that you grew up in, hormones, like diet, like there's so much. So it's interesting because this guy's kind of saying like, you think that you made this decision because like you of your own free will 
made that decision or, you know, this, this, and then he even goes deeper to talk about, you know, the idea of like, are people really evil or are they just controlled by this whole structure of like neurons that were built to react in certain ways based on how they were raised again, genetics, like, well, yeah, because the more that you do a behavior, the more you strengthen the connection right. between your neurons and your, and your synapses right. and your brain. So, right. the, and the more that you, you build that, the stronger that they get and the easier it is to, in, to do those behaviors yes. and, and the harder it is to not do those behaviors. You literally like create like grooves in your like brain. Pathways. Yeah, they're yeah. pathways, they're neural pathways and you strengthen them over time by, by repeating the same kind of habitual actions right. or behaviors. Yeah. Right. So it was. This sounds it, fascinating. I want to read this. It's it's really interesting so far. It sounds like a good mix of psychology with uh, philosophy, which is right up my alley. Yeah, yeah. So you should. Re- it's called. Uh, hold on. Just, I just bought. Actually, you can text it to me. I'll text it to you. <laughs> it's called Behave, and the guy's last name um, sounds like it might be Russian, but I might be totally wrong about that. Um, I heard about it on NPR, and so I was like, oh, I'm going to go. I'm yeah. finally finishing a book by Michael Pollan called um, How to Change Your Mind that's about mushrooms and LSD and how it can treat anxiety, depression, and the history of it and everything. I've heard so much about this that like people it's so are good. really using um, hallucinogenics to – deal with, you know, disorders. See, that's an area of psychology I'd love to, to research and yeah. go into. There's so much interesting shit out there. I mean, if you, if you choose to go learn about it, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. A, like the world is like a really interesting place. If you decide to get outside of your little porn bubble, <laughs> porn, <laughs> pop that porn bubble, pop that love porn it. bubble and try to like find that. Um, yeah. Okay. So I have a couple more questions for okay. you. Um, what is one thing that you've failed at and what do you think that you learned from it? Oh, one thing that I've failed at. You're like nothing. <laughs> I'm like, um, <laughs> um, I haven't found a husband yet. <laughs> okay. I don't know. If- I think that's the only thing that's missing, but I don't think it's a failure. No, I don't think, think so either. Cause I don't, you know, I don't weigh my value by whether I'm in a relationship or right. not. But, um, what do you think you've learned from, cause I feel like every person that you're with teaches you something absolutely. that you bring into the next relationship. Absolutely. And so every relationship is valuable in that way. 100%. Um, how about this? What do you think that you learned from the last major relationship that you were in? Oh, <sighs> Oh, that would probably be like major relationship would be my ex fiance. Um, I would say um, that I learned that no matter how much you guys care about each other, sometimes things just aren't meant to be and they don't work out and that people have their own issues that they have to deal with before bringing, you know? Yeah. Because that relationship, I had dealt with my issues and the other person really hadn't. Right. So that had, was, yeah, yeah, I had to walk away because I was like, you have stuff you have to take care of. Right yeah. Now. I've had that experience as well with yeah. um, someone. It was like, and we both like loved each other so much, but mm-hmm. yeah, we both had, we both had major issues and it just wasn't working out. And I remember like, it was so hard for me to accept that like this relationship is going to end not because of our like lack of like loving each other, but like, we're not good for each other right now. And sometimes timing and sometimes love isn't enough. Yeah. It's not enough to make, to keep that relationship together. And that was like, I don't know, that was like a really sad thing that I walked away with. And that really Mm. bummed me out for a while. But I mean, now I'm with someone who's amazing. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. It totally does. You know, and, and and like you said, I I value every one of my relationships because they've all taught me something and all made me a better person. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like the person I am. (laughs) Yeah. Not to be narcissistic, but I like who I am. I don't, I mean, it's, it's not narcissistic to like yourself. I think there's a huge problem these days with people not liking themselves, you know? Um, I think that social media has contributed a lot to people having unrealistic expectations of who they should be and what their life should be like, even more so than it was before. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, loving yourself, I mean, that's the first step really into having a healthy relationship with other people and with the world in general. So I think that that's something that's super important and it's it's a hard thing to achieve because it's really easy to get stuck in that negative mindset, you know, where you're constantly like thinking bad things about yourself. I got serious here. <laughs> I got like really serious. Sorry. No, it's okay. I just um I'm just all in a good mood. Um 
I think you're. I think you're right. I think that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to say. <laughs> Sorry, you just got so it's like like heavy right there for a minute. I was like, oh. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about penises and vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> I've just had like a lot of like self reflection that I've had to go through for the last. Uh, no, it's good. Self reflection is amazing. I went yeah. to therapy. Yeah, therapy. I went great. to therapy for years, and it was one of the best things I ever did. I think that everybody should go to therapy because mm-hmm. you'll come out a better person and more self aware. And self awareness, when you're interacting with people on a daily basis, is the most important thing. Oh my gosh, I know, right? Yeah, that's something that uh, I actually feel like that's one of otherwise my... you're going to bleed all over people. Do you right. know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You <laughs> never like one of the things that um, I've actually I'm seeing it now on like billboards all inside the buses. But I think it's a great philosophy to have is that like you never know what somebody else is going through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So try to be kind and yeah. try to be like, you know, I had some girl yell at me when I was driving to the gym this morning. Because, like, she was jaywalking and she was, like, mad that I didn't stop for her to, like, cross. And I wanted to, like, you know, get out and be like, bitch, like, this isn't a fucking crosswalk. And, like, it wasn't like she walked right in front of my car and I didn't stop. It, anyways, yeah. whatever. But then I was like, you know what? You don't know what she's going through today, Holly. So just let her yell at you and let's just keep on going. Yeah. I, I have that happen all the time in cars. People cut me off and stuff. And I'm like, just go. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Oh. We forgot. We have the we have the voice. Okay, so a couple of you guys called in and left uh, voicemail questions for Jenna, so we're gonna play them. Okay. Or not. <laughs> Why have you oh, uh, never uh, go back? Me Wait, to... stop. Go back. Ah, it's not a touch screen. <laughs> Hi, this is a question for Jenna Hayes. Jenna, why have you uh, never uh, felt the need to? Uh, enhance your breasts uh, as other uh, adult performers have. Um, I personally believe that um, you look better and women look better with natural breasts, but uh, is there a reason that you've resisted that while others have not? Thank you. Interesting question. That's a great question. I'm sorry we totally butchered it. It's No, it's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) That went very badly. It's awesome. It's okay. Um, I've remained natural. I have no tattoos. The only piercings I have are in my ears. I had my belly button and my tongue pierced when I was a kid, but I took those out. But I have no tattoos, no plastic surgery, no fake nails, no fake hair extensions, nothing like that. Um, a lot of people ask me that, why I didn't get breast implants. And I, I'm i afraid of surgery. And I don't know. I'm afraid that I wouldn't like it afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I think that there came a point where I was like, well, I'm this natural for this long. Like, this is my thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I... And I think it's important to, like, love what you were born with as mm-hmm. much as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, while I don't rag on anyone who wants to improve themselves in any way, absolutely. Go ahead and do it if it makes you feel, you know, beautiful or whatever. But for me, like, the idea of having something foreign in my body like implants or whatnot, just it just didn't sit right with me for my, yeah. my myself. Like, it didn't – like, I love – when other girls have – Fake boobs and stuff. I'm like, oh, let me play. Let me. Yeah. <laughs> Any boobs, really. <laughs> Any boobs. And I'm like, yay. But, um, but uh, you know, I love it. And I love seeing, like, my friends, you know, the stuff that they do and the enhancements and the tattoos that they get and everything. But it's just it's just not for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like needles very much. So the idea of getting a tattoo terrifies me. Yeah. Um, and plastic surgery. I watch those videos that they they do what the botch plastic no i haven't i won't watch that i was gonna say that that'll definitely scare you off years ago before i ever got into porn mtv did a thing like i was it was like 2000s early 2000s 1999 Mm -hmm. maybe mtv did a thing where they were like following girls around that were getting plastic surgery and they had one girl who got like a nose job done and one girl had a breast implant and after watching their experiences and actually watching the surgeries done i was like traumatized yeah i was like i no 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 Mm because i wanted a nose job I still don't like my nose. <laughs> your nose is cute. I hate my What's wrong nose. with your nose? I just don't like it. That's it. I mean, you know, I hear you. I <laughs> but there's a million things. I mean, as my I, face well, that I don't like, as I've so. gotten older, I, I I don't mind it now. You know, I, right. I, I like I I pretty much love everything about myself almost now. But um, but when I was younger, I didn't like it, and you know, that's why I watched those is because mm-hmm. I was like, I want to get a nose job, mm-hmm. and then I watched it, and I was like, oh no, I watched them break the nose with a hammer, and I was like, that's not being done to me. <laughs> 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 just no. <laughs> Okay, next question. Some girls are braver than I am. Hello, Jenna. This is Al calling from Chicago. I just want to say you're very beautiful. And I just want to know how your classes are going. I hope all is well. 
Mm-hmm. My classes are going really well. Um, like I was saying, I, I'm taking a lot this semester. So writing the TED Talk along with it was a really heavy workload. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm taking like four classes, about four classes this semester, and they're going really well. I actually – this is the first semester where I'm probably not going to – I mean last semester I got my first A-. minus. Oh, you poor thing. I did. And now instead of having a perfect 4.0, I have a 3.99 and I'm a little oh, bit pissed about get it. Get out of here. But – Disgusting. I know. But this <laughs> semester I actually may get a B. Oh. I might get a B. I know. You do. You hold yourself to a high standard in all things that you do, I don't do. you? I do. I don't do anything with my half ass. I'm always, always my full ass. <laughs> <laughs> Never half ass it. But um, but yeah, and the, the class that I'm not doing the greatest in is, of course, psychological aspects of parenthood. But <laughs> that's a mouthful. <laughs> but you know, I don't really know if I want to be a parent. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, so you maybe don't. maybe that's a sign that I'm not doing good in this class. <laughs> I have like an 86, and I'm like 86. <laughs> But, you know, oh. Social psychology, I kill it at every time I take it. Yeah. I just kill it. Yeah, I love social psychology. <laughs> what is social psychology specifically? Just the psychology of how people interact with each other? Um, yeah, and it, it talks about um, a lot of things like um, coercion, compliance, um, attitudes, behaviors, things like that. It's how in- people interact with each other and their thoughts and behaviors related to that. Yeah. Do you find that you're like better at dealing with people or maybe like sniffing out what people are really after after taking these classes? Mm-hmm. You're like, I, I know. I can see like all the things that you're doing to try to like coerce me into this and I like I got your I got your number, buddy. But I still I still have a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's you know, I have friends who are like, Oh, you're gonna start analyzing me all the time and like even boyfriends and stuff, don't analyze me because you're becoming, you know. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not. <laughs> I hear that from a lot of like therapists who try to like go out and just be social and people are just like, oh, are you could like, are you going to analyze me? Well, it's or- funny because people either want you to or they really don't want yeah. you to. And, yeah. and they're like, I'm not, I'm not trying to do either. I'm just trying to hang out. Right. You know, but sometimes something will come up and I'll be like, oh, well, you know, you might be doing that because of this. Right. right, right. And they'll be like, I'm, like, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help <laughs> <laughs> spread my knowledge. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Jenna, for coming thank in. You. It was so great to have you. We're going to do a short little Q&A with her for awesome. my Patreon members. But um, So you have to join patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered to hear that. Um, but for the rest of you, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media and your website and all your pluggables? Yes. Um, jennahayes.com, of course, is my website. I also still have jennaxstudios.com that has all the footage of me before I retired. Um, and then my OnlyFans, which is OnlyFans.com slash Jenna Hayes, Instagram.com slash Jenna Hayes, Twitter.com slash Jenna Hayes, Facebook.com slash The Real Jenna Hayes. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then ShopJennaHayes.com, Oh, right? ShopJennaHayes.com is my store. Thank you. There's so many links to say. I know. <laughs> and right? I'm not used to doing this anymore. <laughs> but yeah, and the cool thing about that is I'm actually selling some of the Polaroids from my final dance tour, original Polaroids that were oh. some that were printed in the limited edition book and some that are never before seen, never mm-hmm. printed, one of a kind. Like, yeah, so you can own some of the rare things from my dance tour or from my movies. I'm selling like costumes that I wore on my dance tour or stuff I wore in my scenes, like shoes and stockings. Just and not her like agent that. provocateur lingerie. Just, no, I'm keeping that. <laughs> Unless you want to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for it. I don't know. Some of the stuff I'm selling for goes pretty, it's pretty pricey. It's pretty pricey. I sold the boots that I got discovered in for $5,000. So wow. <laughs> yes. That's a piece of Jenna Hayes history, yes, man. You can no. only get that once. It is, and it's great. It's it's. I wore it in movies too, so the fan was really pleased. And is it, for me, it was really cool to sell that to a fan and have them like have something that mm-hmm. you know. Plus, it paid for my my semester of tuition and, and books. See, people, you should yes. go and support Jenna Hayes financially <laughs> because she's not going to spend it on Louis Vuitton bags or a. Mercedes Benz, but she's actually going to use it to further her education. So that is an even better reason for you to go and give her some money. Hell yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. (laughs) You're welcome. I'll take 20% commission. (laughs) (laughs) And you guys can follow me uh, at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Um, Facebook group is facebook.com slash groups slash Holly Randall unfiltered. And I have a website where you can actually find all that stuff. If you just go to hollyrandallunfiltered.com. 
Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Yeah.